be a few hit points left. He's only got a, a small amount. Can't survive for too long. The uh, third tactical squad being produced back at home. It's not joining the combat just yet. And SD must have not uh, given it the command to head through or rallied it. Force commander just wailing on the on the Necrons with that uh, that hammer, the demon hammer there. And this is an intense fight, a fight. We've got a Wraith in the combat. Nice choice there by uh, Lorag Picker. That Wraith is really going to um, help in this sort of situation where there's a lot of close combat. And that uh, Wraith can obviously tie up a whole squad of plasma guns. So very nice choice there by Lorag Picker. So that's, I think, uh, the, the right way to play Necrons in this sort of situation. You've got to prevent the plasma guns from being, uh, being, uh, being uh, freed up to fire at you. And a second Wraith coming in. That first Wraith has used phase shift to just to... Uh, to uh, uh, avoid death uh, momentarily and we've got a, a one squad of space marines with a heavy bolter and a plasma gun in the meantime Wraith being sent over to tie that one up and more Wraiths coming in now and this is exactly what Lorag Picker needs to do to actually prevent uh, a serious uh, a serious disaster here in terms of uh, the fight and th this is a very crucial fight mind you Chaplin being produced back at home and Solar Flare going down in the middle of all of the space marines and Nesty looks like he's retreating now so this is very well played by Lorag Picker, actually um, forcing him back with a whole lot of Necron Warriors gunning, gunning down the Space Marines in the meantime with, uh, with Wraiths uh, preventing the, the Tacticals from getting any respite to do some damage and this is just fantastic play by the Necrons, can't stress that enough. I mean, uh, I, I thought and, uh, and Lorag Picker was surely going to get a disadvantage in that position there with uh, that fight and all those plasma guns showing up having not really achieved anything up until then. But he's got some momentum now, he's got some economy. Uh, unfortunately though, we've got a, a group of large group of Space Marines unengaged right now and they'll be able to move in and start getting some more uh, more kills on the Necrons. We've also got a Liar Squad of uh, of Assault Marines, but Lorag Picker is at Tier 2 now. He's got Race Despair and putting down that Thermoplasma Generator, so that's really going to help in terms of the economy. The Necron Lords managed to survive with Phylactory and uh, Phase Shift, and that's just a fantastic combination. You can you can tie up the enemy for ages with the Necron uh, Lords' high hit points, and then when he's low on hit points, you use the Phase Shift to prevent him, prevent him from dying, and the Phylactory just gets him straight back up to full health. Now that's fantastic. Two Good thinking there by Lorag Picker. One thing I want to point out, guys, just if you're a Necron player and you're looking for tips on ways to struggle against the, the better races, uh, one thing Lorag Picker has done this game is actually to delete his Forbidden Archive. Uh, he's deleted his Forbidden Archive uh, after choosing three spells and he gets, um, gets actual power back from doing that and doesn't lose the use of his abilities. So that's a, a, a hint for you Necron players out there wanting to get a bit of an edge. But right now, the Necrons are under pressure. It looks like Nesty has spotted that first bullet thermoplasma generator. The uh, units have started firing it and he's spotted it, moving his uh, assault marines over there. In the meantime, Wraith heading to the 12 o'clock position to decap a critical objective. That's going to be handy because Nesty's still got the take and hold right now. Several Wraiths out in the field here, so once he gets a uh, Wraith flight and once he gets uh, a phase shift uh, on them, that should actually uh, get uh, close enough to the combat. Soul Flare going down, that's actually going to give the race time to get into close combat, so that's really going to help. These race are going to be tying up these the tactical space marines, and nothing much the, race, the tactical marines can do anything do about it. In the meantime, Necron Warriors are making it into close combat. The first group is broken, though. The uh, the, ta the assault marines flying into close combat, and this is going to be a serious fight here. Uh, it's going to come down to who can win in the close uh, close quarters. We've got a tactical... Uh, a couple of tactical space marines. We've got the chaplain and force commander in there too to fire. Force commander is on the F2 stance, so he's going to be using his plasma pistol, uh, dropping down a, a wraith there. And uh, Necron's pulling out, so Lorag Picker's not really liking that. Uh, he's not really liking the space marine characters and the fact that he's out squatted in the midst there. We have got a greater uh, summoning core going down, so this is actually looking very promising for the Necrons. Uh, it's going to be a, a tight game though, because the space marines are out in force in the midfield, and uh, no doubt they're taking up as well. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Lorag Becker has lost that thermoplasma generator. So, uh, Assault Marines moving now to decapture the Relic. That's going to slow the Necrons down a little bit. Won't have an opportunity to put a, uh, an obelisk down. But the Necrons, bear in mind, they do have, looks like, five obelisks up and running. That's uh, plenty of, of, uh, of, of speed upgraded. And mass plasma. Look at all that plasma. And rocket launchers. So, uh, Anesti's already anticipating the destroyers. Uh, no, no doubt, and also using the rocket launchers to destroy obelisks and uh, other Necron buildings when he needs to. And that uh, that uh, chaplain healing aura is really helping out. We've got a machine cult as well, so two rhinos. That the first one's already out in the field. The second one's arriving now, and it's going to be really hard for the Necrons to deal with this. Uh, once the rhinos are out, it's going to really uh, make it more difficult for the race to get the job done. But. Uh, <laughs> 
Necron's moving out now despite that. They are in a, a bad position though. They're going to have to move through that choke. They've got Rhinos to, de to contend with. And uh, what can Laragnica do? Charging up with his Necron Lord now. Maybe we'll see a Solar Flare. We've got uh, Race heading out to chase down those plasma guns, and I feel like that really is the Necron counter to these these Tactical Space Marines. But uh, because these Rhinos are in position now, all an has to do is just uh, man up the Rhinos, move away, then um, then pull out and start killing the, the Wraiths uh, that way. So uh, both Wraiths are full up with units right now. If you like when you see a squad of, a squad of immortals, that would be the next choice, the next, next strategic choice here from the Necrons. Go for immortals, kill the um, rhinos, and do it that way. Now, at the 12 o'clock, looks like uh, Lerakbrook is going to make a second attempt at getting that thermoplasma up and running, and uh, it's going to be a while before the Space Marines spot that, so this may be an opportunity for the Necrons to get some serious uh, power going and uh, try to keep up with the Space Marines in terms of economy. We've got destroyers going, and that Wraith has used phase shifts, so very handy with the Wraiths using phase shifts. Some of them have not, though. Some of them just using Wraith flight to charge in and get tied up. Uh, rockets firing away at that destroyer, so it's going to take a lot of flight. Solar flare going down in the middle of the Space Marines, so that's that's really going to be handy. It's going to force the Space Marines back into their base. Necrons are piling in here, so this is looking actually quite bad for Nesty. Somehow, the Red Pook is actually ma maintaining the lead here, and... Uh, Overcoming the Kron curse, as we've been calling it in the Verai so far, to actually uh, get a, a decent showing him, but it's it's not sealed for him yet. He's got to get through. He's got to break the defenses. He's got to actually uh, deal with the space marine tech as it uh, as it shows up. Uh, chaplain right in the thick of it. That chaplain is actually looking fairly compromised. though. he's in enemy territory. He's right in the middle of it. He's got plenty of hit points though. That destroyer in close combat and is now freed up to get some shots off. Destroyer's doing heaps of damage against infantry. We've got one squad of Necron Warriors broken in the background there, and uh, Anesti will be wanting to pull back his space moves into the into his space. Chaplain very low in health. That chaplain chaplain is looking like a liability right now. He's uh, he's oh he's taken it. The chaplain is gone down, so no more chaplain, no more healing aura, and the Necrons pushing in. Uh, looks like a, a very defensive situation here from the Space Marine squad. We've got no LP2 there, unfortunately, but we've got plenty of Space Marine tacticals in the background. In the meantime, the Assault Marines not contributing to the fight, uh, unfortunately, decapping a point. I feel like an they could really use those Assault Marines, but we've got two Predators in the meantime, and Turbinators, and a Solar Flare going down with, uh, oh man. Uh, solar Flare going down right in the middle, so this Tacticals and Marines can't fight, but the Terminators are outside of the Solar Flare, are, are getting some shots off, and wow, uh, that's an Orbital Barrage going down, <laughs> perfect position for it, and uh, Lareg uh, is forced back, so fantastic fight back there from Anesti, uh, overcoming <laughs> the lead that uh, Lareg Pick have picked up there to uh, come back with, with Tier 3, he's got Terminators and, and, uh, and he's got... Uh, uh, he's got Predators as well. In the meantime, uh, Lerakpika is responding with tech of his own. He may get to tier 3 as well. He's gone for the second monolith. So that just shows you how much power uh, Lerakpika has right now. This is going to be epic. Absolutely epic. Uh, and this is winner takes all, guys. The winner of this game will go to the final. And the loser uh, basically gets nothing except uh, second place. And uh, these Rhinos have been very handy uh, for the Space Marines. Great mobility. Uh, and Scarab's moving now to the 12 o'clock just to try and capture a critical. That, that thermoplasma generator is up and running. It has been for some time now, and the Space Marines just don't know about it. So plenty of power going down for the Necrons, and can they hold up to Tier 3? Uh, we'll see shortly, and that, that double monolith is going to give uh, plenty of production to the Necrons as well. But looks like we've got Predators moving in with their, uh, their auto cannons pumping. Uh, whatever you call those turret guns uh, in the 40k table cup then they used to be auto cannons i'm not sure what they are now but uh wow necrons uh, looking to be very disinvincible right now it's gonna it's gonna take some time for them from to get uh, really up and running with tier 3 but uh Lerakpika, uh, finally has got some immortals and he really needed those uh finally to deal with the predators maybe even two squads of immortals could be called for right now uh Serpentor is heading out and there's the deep strike so we're probably gonna see some terminators arriving very shortly